Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Silence of the Reefs. Hello and welcome back everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. So as many of you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, reefs, whether it be uh, in our reef tank or natural reefs. I'm an avid scuba diver and snorkeler. Uh, the uh, Amro Azul uh, TV, the Azul part means blue because uh, I feel like this is where I belong. <laughs> uh, so I've been doing, uh, I, I've been keeping up on the scientific literature on, on uh, natural reefs and, and trying to kind of extrapolate uh, whatever knowledge that I gained from reading the literature uh, to reefing. And I actually thought it'd be fun to to officially have uh, uh, a, a section on my YouTube channel where I talk about the latest uh, papers, scientific papers that I've uh, been reading. So it just started, this idea started a couple of, uh, actually about a month ago where I did uh, a video on uh, uh, nutrients, nutrient enrichment uh, in natural reefs. Uh, it was actually uh, pretty popular. It almost went viral. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, th I think it went viral from uh, uh, from like a reefing channel perspective, uh, but it's it's not like Gangnam style or anything. Uh, but anyway, so I, I I was encouraged by this and I thought it would be actually fun to uh, to continue uh, on that theme and start presenting papers on uh, uh, on natural reefs. And and I I typically read uh, two or three scientific papers uh, every month. Uh, and I try to pick like uh, the most interesting ones or the most relevant ones uh, for the hobby. Uh, but some papers are just like really, really cool. And although they seem like a little bit out there, uh, I, I think we should all kind of try to uh, uh, learn a little bit more about the ecology and uh, biology and conservation of uh, reef ecosystems. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I would like to present uh, the paper for this month. The paper that we'll be discussing today is uh, called Habitat Degradation Negatively Affects Auditory Settlement Behavior of Coral Reef Fish. It was uh, published in the Journal of Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences earlier this year. Uh, the first author is Timothy Gordon, uh, and he is in Exeter University in the U United Kingdom. All right, so uh, before we go on the paper, uh, let me just tell you a little bit about that background story here. All right, so we all know that uh, there is... Uh, uh, coral reefs are at risk of uh, bleaching and uh, and damage from a wide variety of reasons. Uh, a major cause is uh, a higher temperature caused uh, by uh, uh, global climate change. And when reefs uh, are damaged, often they quickly turn, uh, they go from uh, an acropora or coral dominated landscape into a, a macroalgae dom dominated landscape. So as you see in this picture here, both of these are uh, pictures taken from the Great Barrier Reef, uh, but this is obviously a, a healthy coral, uh, a healthy coral reef, and, and this is a damaged coral reef. And so uh, the big question is, uh, how do we go from a degraded reef back into uh, a healthy reef? And uh, there's been, you know, there's many ways uh, that this could be achieved, but uh, uh, we know from uh, other research has shown that uh, the reef, the fish community, the reef fish community is really important uh, component that acts to kind of uh, improve reef resilience and, and allow reefs to recover. Uh, the most obvious one uh, when you're looking at this picture is uh, uh, you you're have a lot of algae. So before this reef can recover, uh, this macroalgae has to be uh, 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 has to be eaten by uh, herbivores. Uh, uh, so uh, that's kind of the the main picture of uh, the, the main the big picture of, of what this paper is trying to understand. And uh, primarily, uh, how do how do reefs recruit uh, young fish, immature fish? Uh, so that way, uh, the the fish could essentially clean up the reef, allowing it uh, to be further uh, colonized by uh, by Acropora. Uh, so uh, 
for the most part, people didn't really uh, understand how fish, how immature fish uh, find reefs. So uh, I actually didn't notice, but a, a lot of reef fish have uh, a pelagic uh, larval stage where essentially the the immature stages of uh, in the fish's life cycle are out uh, in in far away from reefs. So uh, they disperse and they have to find their way back uh uh to uh to uh, uh coral reefs that uh, so they could continue with their life cycle uh so uh, a lot of people guess that it, it could be like uh, uh smells uh but uh but smells are not great because obviously they're depending on current and so on uh so uh th there's always been this hypothesis that maybe that uh, uh immature fish find their way home uh, by hearing and so this is where the paper comes in uh, to try to test this idea that uh, fish hear their way home and so the authors uh, carried out the study in uh, lizard island in the great barrier reef in australia and uh, they went uh, they started the experiment in 2012 uh, and they took recording of uh, uh, audio recordings of reefs at 10 different sites uh, within the lizard island reef system and they went back in 2016 and to the same places and they also took uh, measurements, uh, 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 audio, audio measurements. Uh, and uh, what happened between 2012 and 2016 was there was actually two cyclones that destroyed uh, uh, big chunks of the reef. And then there was a major bleaching event that killed about 60% of, uh, of uh, the, the Acropora colonies. And so uh, here is actually a picture of uh, uh, from the first author of the paper where uh, uh, where uh, they uh, th this is what the damaged reef looked like in 2016. So obviously, you know, big, big change. And so uh, the first bit of the uh, study was just comparing the soundscape of the happy uh, pre-degradation reef to uh, the sad dead reef. And uh, I'll show you the results here. All right. So here is uh, uh, four figures that uh, uh, that show you how the soundscape changed over time. Uh, so I'll just I'm gonna focus on on panel A here because for the most part all of this is the same. So uh, the the authors used the recordings to take the sound and summarize it uh, in four different metrics. Here's acoustic complexity, uh, acoustic richness. So those two are kind of uh, uh, summarizing how much uh, the the complexity in the sound the snap rate so we you know we a lot of us uh, have uh, snapping shrimp or pistol shrimp in our tank and you know when they we hear them doing this click so that that could be one way to summarize this uh, and then the sound pressure you could think of it as just like a, pol a volume and for every one of these you have uh, a pre-degradation uh, measurement and a post-degradation measurement the, the lines are actually uh, show you the change in sound in a specific site within this reef and these boxes represent the uh, average. Uh, the mean here is the uh, are these thick lines, and around it is uh, the 95 percent, uh, uh, the standard error of the mean, I believe. Anyway, so the the big picture here is that uh, the sound changed from pre degradation to post degradation. Uh, so uh, you know, there, the, if you look at these bars here, the blue bars are always a lot higher than the green bars. And there was a clear direction in the change. So uh, across all of these four ways to summarize the quality of the sound in the reefs, uh, you could see that there was a decline. So the complexity of the sounds went down, the richness went down, the snapping rate went down, and the volume went down. So there, there was a, uh, the soundscape was a lot quieter post-degradation. And uh, I was uh, uh, kind, uh, Timothy Gordon, the first author, was kind enough to actually share with me uh, some of the sounds that he recorded. Uh, so I'm going to uh, play for you now uh, what the sound of the post degradation, like be before degradation, uh, I'm going to play for you the sound of the reef, and we're going to start it now.
And so you could clearly tell the uh, the volume uh, and and the, and the soundscape uh, in after the reef was degraded was a lot lower. All right. So what does that mean? Uh, you know, the authors from here clearly showed that once we have degradation, then it makes the reef sound quieter. But is this going to actually affect fish recruitment? Are are fish going to be visiting uh, the quieter reefs less often? And so here the authors did a couple of really neat experiments, I thought. Uh, so one of them, they set up uh, light traps. And so light traps uh, uh, attract uh, uh, premature, uh, uh, sorry, p pelagic larvae that, uh, uh, that are swimming kind of in, in open areas of the ocean, uh, uh, trying to find reefs. And so uh, here they set up three sites. Uh, one, they played back ambient sound. Uh, one side they played the pre-degradation sound, so the the the, uh, the sound from uh, the reefs that were healthy, and then they also played the sounds uh, of the post-degradation, uh, so the the damaged reefs, and then they checked their traps and they compared uh, whether fish prefer to visit these sites or these sites. Uh, then they also, uh, the authors did another experiment where they set up patch reefs. Essentially, patch reefs are, are bits of uh, dead corals that they place on the sand bed and they check whether fish uh, uh, move in into these uh, little areas, kind of mini aquariums within the reef, so to speak. And again, the same, the same story. So they had their... Uh, uh, their fake kind of corals or dead corals uh, in three different sites and one site they uh, played the uh, soundscape of the healthy reef uh, one side they played the soundscape of the uh, degrade, degraded reef and another one was a control where they just played the ambient sound and so they were able to kind of compare the fish that uh, uh, that settled into these patch reefs or the uh, the fish that uh, were attracted to uh, the light traps and ask whether there was a difference in preference and so here uh, figure c is uh, is the results of the light traps and so on the y axis and the x axis here uh, you're looking at the effect size so zero means that uh, there was no preference uh, positive values mean that the fish preferred uh, uh, a specific site. The negative values uh, means that the fish did not pre uh, or avoided a specific site. So uh, the blue bars here represent the soundscape of the healthy reefs. And you could see that the healthy reefs, uh, the sounds of the healthy reef, uh, led, uh, attracted fish way more often uh, than the sound of the degraded reef. So fish preferred the sound of the healthy reef. Uh, in the light traps and on here this is the patch reefs so the the little bits of uh, dead coral that the authors placed uh, on the sand bed and again you see that uh, whenever these uh, bits of dead coral were associated with uh, uh, quality uh, reef soundscape uh, uh, they attracted way more fish than the bits of uh, dead corals uh, that, uh, that received the, the post degradation the degraded soundscapes so these two results clearly show uh, that uh, fish prefer to settle in in reefs that that have uh, a more mature uh, soundscape. So that means more degraded sites are not going to receive as much incoming uh, settlement from fish than than healthy reefs. And so uh, the authors, uh, I thought they they uh, uh, they ended the paper with this uh, uh, very kind of interesting and and potentially a bit depressing feedback loop. So the idea here is that you know we have disturbed events uh, like climate change and and uh, and uh, 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 cyclones and, and hurricanes that could cause damage to a reef. This then changes the soundscape of a reef, which alters the uh, the ability of the reef to recruit new fish, and that could then feed back to cause more habitat degradation because the damaged reefs are essentially building up an algae. And if, we're n if a reef is not able to attract enough uh, grazers and, and herbivores, uh, then the, uh, the reef is not able to kind of recover and, and, and will, potentially be, will potentially be continue uh, on its kind of the degradation pathway. So this is a positive feedback cycle. So yeah, I thought, I thought there was a really interesting paper. Uh, one of, uh, uh, one of uh, the most eye-opening thing about this paper is is uh, the kind of the the importance of herbivores uh, for for uh, for uh, 
uh, reef resilience. So uh, herbivores and, and herbivorous fish are, are really important for essentially uh, removing the macroalgae that builds up on dead corals uh, and allows the, the corals to, uh, 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 allowing the acropora to recolonize and, 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 and recover uh, again. So one of the, the most interesting things about this paper, I mean, there, there are many inter- things, interesting things about this paper, but uh, this uh, it really highlights the importance of uh, herbivores in, in, uh, in re- uh, making a reef resilient. Uh, so uh, once uh, reefs get degraded, they uh, start building up with macroalgae and you need the herbivores to essentially uh, uh, clean uh, the algae uh, so that way Acropora could re-inhabit. And I think this is really interesting from the context of uh, reef keeping because in, in many ways we also struggle with problems of algae and, and having a healthy uh, herbivore and cleanup crew population is, is important in, in, in maintaining our reef and, and making it resilient uh, to, uh, uh, to algae. So uh, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this paper. I, I thought it was really uh, neat. I mean, it, it does kind of, now that the authors know this, is, it does suggest some interesting ways uh, for uh, helping with reef recovery. Uh, so possibly you could manipulate the soundscape of a degraded reef to, to make it more attractive to fish. And what the authors uh, have actually suggested is, is they could use uh, recordings of reefs to, to monitor the health of, an, uh, of the, the ecosystems. So you could kind of predict when when uh, reefs are are not in a bad shape by by just listening to them. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this paper. I think it is open access, so you could uh, go online and uh, and look up at all the data and the figures yourself. And again, big shout out to uh, uh, Timothy Gordon for share uh, for sharing his uh, pictures and uh, for sharing his uh, sound recordings of uh, from his study. All right, uh, thank you so much and I hope to see you soon. Bye.